This is the Orca Boat Shop and my name is Rod. So I now have the breast hook or what some people simply call the deck and the guard rails, the in whales, the out whales on the acorn sailing skiff. So uh, this video will be showing you how I accomplished that. So let's get to it. For the breast hook I've taken some uh, mahogany and I've cut it on a diagonal so that the grain will be running parallel with the, uh, the shear line of the boat, the outside of the boat. And uh, here I am just uh, trimming the slight bevel on the edge on my table saw. So we have a bit of a peak in the deck. So here's a little trick. If you just put the piece you've just cut with a, uh, we'll put in this case, 60 degree bevel and use it as a spacer, I can cut the second piece exactly the same way. Did I contact the whole piece? I think I need to just shave a tad bit more. And there we have a beautiful joint with a bit of a peak in the center so I can glue these together for installation at a later date. So after doing a little dry run of a clamp up here I'm just going to put some epoxy on both these surfaces. Waiting for the epoxy to harden, I just made a some simple template out of cardboard, making it fit nicely into the end of the bow, figuring all the bevels and calculating all out, then transferred the pattern onto the deck, centered it, and cut it out on my bandsaw. I have the breast hook fit and to ready to go in. I'm just going to clean it up and uh, put some varnish on all the surfaces, underside surfaces, inside edge surfaces here before installing it. I'm just going to scrape off this thickened epoxy. I just ripped up some nice mahogany. Now I don't have pieces long enough to uh, make the full length. So here I am just using my scarfing jig to cut the uh, 1 to 10, 1 to 12 scarf on the ends of all of the pieces and then I'll set up and glue them together. Here I am just gluing up the scarf joints using epoxy. I've got some uh, scrap lumber covered in packing tape as a backing surface to make sure they don't slide as I clamp them together. 
and then I just left those overnight to harden as well. The in whales will be the most difficult to fit. Here I am just uh, measuring up various bevels and angles and marking them on the end of the in whale and I'll make my cut. So first I will fit at the stern end against the transom and then I will move clamping in place and move forward and fit the butt end of the deck end into the notch that I've created in my deck. Now I have to admit that I made a bit of a mistake on my first attempt because I forgot that I was actually going to put a spacer in on the stern end against the transom. So I have a solid surface for rivet screws when the knee goes in. So when I cut the full length, I didn't calculate for that. And with the spacer in there, I come up about an eighth of a three sixteenths uh, uh, short on my length. So I actually had to uh, cut the scarf joint back off and rejoin a new piece so that I had the proper length. I have fit the spacer here on the port side at the stern. Now I need to pick up some more bevels here to cut the in whale or in whale rail to fit up against the transom. So we take that measurement and put it on to our stock. And then I need to pick up the bevel going down. Now not many of you are be fond of this little bevel that I have because the very end of it touches things but I can kind of sight and see and we do mark on our stock here again and then I go cut that off. So now I've cut my piece, my rough stock and we're going to see how well that butts up to the transom with all the pieces at the right angles and clamped in place. And I'm just going to make sure these are lined up flush. Tighten that down. And I'm going to go and give a whack on the other end to just push this into the transom. So I'm very happy with the fit here at the stern. So now I'm going to spring this all in place, put as many clamps as I can to make sure that it is against the frames. And then I can determine where to cut the other end at the bow to fit into the notch into the breast hook. So I've marked here, I'm going to just unspring it Ow. without pinching myself. Just cut this off. Now this is kind of a rough cut. I can easily cut a bit more. 
or trimmed down with a block plane or on my disc sander. spring that down into the notch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a reference mark on some point here whereby I can line it up in that notch without having to refit the whole in whale back to the transom. So I would say right there. So if I slide that into my notch how far do I have to go to get my reference marks to line up? And it looks about eighth of an inch. So we're gonna, I'm gonna take it to the disc sander and trim that down. Now there might be some bevels in here that I need to pay attention to. We're there. So I should be able to spring this right back into place in the notch. Now just to reinforce this area here because I can see that the rail is trying to push the gunnel. Now when I get the out whale on it will probably all smooth itself out but I think it's going to be best if I put a block in here. Now it's going to be best if we label all these parts. Let's call this uh, P1 because I'll be wanting to round over all these corners but I don't want to round over past there or in the back where I will have a knee. Now that I have the in wheel fit and time to fit the out wheel. And the only bevel I need to concern myself with is at the bow here where it's going to butt up to the outside stem. should be something like that and will there be any such bevel facing down probably a little bit but I'm not too sure We'll try that, but we can always shave it down. I've got a lot of excess uh, material out the transom end, the stern. Okay, we'll clean up that. I'm not too sure I really like that pointy end here. I'm probably just going to round that over a little bit. Otherwise, you know, it's just susceptible to something catching that and pulling it off. Still enough meat for me to get a screw through the end into the stem. Once I had the four pieces of the guards and the rails uh, manufactured, I left them clamped on the boat for a couple of days because I did not have the length of rivets needed. Then I took them off and I varnished all the inside mating surfaces so that once they're riveted on, I'm not going to be able to get in there and, and clean up or, or, or uh, seal the inside edges of those uh, pieces. 
Once the rivets arrived, I was able to move on to riveting the in-wheels and out-wheels on the boat permanently. To rivet the rails onto the boat, I'm using a number 10 gauge copper rivet, two and a half inches long, and a larger rove that will fit over the end there. Now these are a bit larger than all of the other rivets I've used in the boat, but they are necessary to uh, make the length. So it's with all the riveting first to drill the hole through from the outside and the trick was to try and make sure that when I punched through the inside that I was somewhat centered on the in wheel. I then also countersunk the outside a bit just so that the head of the rivet was going to run flush with the outside and uh, as with all the other riveting it's just a matter of uh, setting the rove, trimming the uh, excess material off and then using my ball peen hammer to tap, 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 and rip it over the end. Once I had all the rivets set, I set my screws in where necessary, I plugged those holes with uh, mahogany plugs, sanded everything smooth, and uh, sealed everything with a couple of coats of varnish just so that dirty hands don't get everywhere and leave marks. If you're paying close attention to the actual boat itself, you'll notice that I also have the seat risers in and the stern seat assembly all in there. I was working on that while I was waiting for the rivets to arrive, but that'll be all in the next episode. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, do consider becoming a subscriber because there's lots of things going on in the Orca Boat Shop. Thank you very much. See you next time.